it's 6 uh, p.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> 6 1 p.m. Uh, I'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Are you in? No, I don't. Let me type the second. Okay, four digits on the link. Okay, so let's take a roll call. Um, Mr. Leonard is here. Mr. Bartholomew. Here. That beautiful sunny sky behind you there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Guo. Present. Present. Okay. Um, at this time, if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak, um, I would ask them to um, enter any comments. No, Anyone from the public who'd like to speak? Okay. Third time, third announcement. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak? Okay, that's that. I'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Okay, everyone's seen the agenda. Are there any additions, corrections? Uh, to the agenda. I don't have anything. Okay, Rich, Mr. Gloves, anything? Uh, nothing from me. Okay. All right, so I need a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting. I'll make a motion. Okay. A second. Mr. Gloves, Mr. Bartholomew, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, so moved. We've adopted the agenda for the evening. Previous minutes. Has everyone had a chance to go through the previous minutes? Any changes, corrections? Uh, we also need a motion to accept those. I have no corrections. I make a motion we accept the minutes as presented. Mr. Bartholomew. I second, second that. Mr. Glode, in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? So moved. Old business. Chief, anything under old business? First of all, nice. welcome back, Chief. I know you've been dealing with some health issues. And good to see you back at the meeting tonight. Yeah, no, everything's good. Um, I just wanted to uh, quickly brief the board. I forwarded you uh, an email that was uh, more extensive, but uh, with our progress working towards the accreditation manager, uh, it's been sent back to committee. I've been briefing everybody on this since last January and uh, not of 2021. So it's back to committee. Our goal would be if, if, if approved to start uh, an interviewing process so that we can have uh, boots on the ground July 1 or thereabouts to, uh, to start this accreditation uh, in addition to the accreditation software. So I just wanted to brief you up. You have that, it's on the record. And uh, my next appointment is to go back to subcommittee and we'll see where it goes from there. Do you have a date for the subcommittee meeting, Chief? Um, I I do. Uh, I I'll, I'll look it up if you're discussing something else. But uh, it was sent to me by Corporation Council and uh, by also the City Town Clerk. Okay. Um, if you could uh, make the commissioners aware of that, I'd like to attend. March twenty fourth. Yeah. March twenty fourth. <clears throat> okay. It's also noted in the packet I sent to you. Oh, okay. I did not see that. Um, body worn cameras. How are we making out with that progress? I know we were moving along in a pretty good pace at one point. Deputy Chief is uh, managing that, so I'll defer to him. Uh, we had to take care of a couple uh, technology issues, which uh, we took care of last week. So uh, we are, the, the officers have been wearing them for about a month, but uh, the official rollout will be in the next week or two. Okay. Sounds good. Um, thank you for that work on that, Chief. Um, <laughs> I know that's been a, a that's a, a very large hill to climb. So, um, Chief, anything on, right now? I know they're they're talking about some changes to the police accountability laws. Anything that stands out right now that the commission should be aware of? There's there's a bunch of stuff that's up in the air. Uh, one of the things is uh, discussing changing uh, the CALIA accreditation 
to a different accreditation being state uh, accreditation. But regardless of who they go with, uh, the only thing it saves us is the actual bill uh, to Kalia, which is not in this year's budget. <clears throat> It'll be budgeted next year or the year after. Um, I think that's about $14,000 to Kalia. Uh, and then there's bill every year thereafter for reaccreditation. But um, we still need an accreditation manager and we still need the software because it's the standard for anybody that's going to be using it. So uh, all my proposals stand as they are, regardless of any changes. And uh, substantively, um, there's a lot of Second Amendment changes coming up, uh, but um, I, I haven't been following too much stuff that's that's uh, more detrimental than what's been passed already. <laughs> okay, thank you, Chief. Um, status on uh, hiring and potential promotional exam? <clears throat> so uh, as it stands, um, everything is in flux. Um, we currently have a, a, a new hiring process running. Um, I forgot the number of agencies and a deputy can correct me, but it's, it's a dozen or 17 agencies hiring. And I want to say um, we have 21 applicants for all of those departments. Um, we're going to be uh, very shortly starting our lateral transfer process. And then we're going to be expanding out to look for new recruits. Um, there's some things that are in flux <clears throat> that are personnel matters. Uh, but you may see upwards of uh, four, five, six, seven, eight retirements in the next few months um, or, or separation of services, for lack of a better term. <clears throat> so that's where we sit. Um, and I've been warning everybody, especially on the tax board and the boat, uh, that th this is serious. Uh, we're, we're probably losing 80% of our first line supervision. So that institutional knowledge and that, uh, that's, that's tough to swallow. I've never seen anything like this in my career here. So it's going to be, uh, an interesting, uh, haul, but we'll get through it. Okay. And last but not least, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, uh, capital plan, have you heard anything at all? I, I have not heard anything at all on the capital plan. <clears throat> we, uh, we haven't discussed the capital plan of, uh, of this current year that we're in. Normally we were funded for that uh, and we're ready to spend the money on July 1 of last year of 2021. Um, this year it just sits open. So uh, we're behind uh, the cycle and uh, cars are the only thing we really have on the agenda. Okay, and our, our maintenance costs starting to add up as the fleet is aging? I, I will defer to the deputy. I think I think we're close to being okay at the moment, uh, but that's not what we build in the contingency for. Uh, I think the the key point is that we try to keep our first line vehicles under warranty. Uh, once we lose that warranty because they age out either through mileage or through uh, years, then uh, any um, major expense is catastrophic to our budget. If we dropped five, seven thousand dollars for a tranny or an engine, mm -hmm. and it happens to two vehicles, we can't recover. Uh, so that's that's kind of where we sit, and that's our our philosophy. And we do have a lot of uh, warranty covered repairs. I mean, these are rough service vehicles. But uh, if I missed anything, Scott, you can chime in. <clears throat> uh, no, the the, uh, the problem is. Currently, we have five vehicles that are still covered by warranty. By the end of this fiscal year, we will be down to three vehicles that are under uh, warranty out of a total of eight frontline vehicles. Uh, and then uh, two months into next fiscal year, uh, August, September timeframe, we will be down to uh, one vehicle that is still under warranty. Uh, so missing one cycle of vehicles uh, puts us in a serious predicament, which it looks like we're going to be in, uh, where if... Uh, even minor repairs, uh, 500 here, 500 there, we will quickly uh, be in a position where we don't have any money to repair the vehicles. Okay, um, thank you for that rosy outlook, Deputy <laughs> Chief. Uh, new business. I have no new business for the board. Okay, Deputy Chief Todd? No, nothing. Okay, commissioners. Mike Rich. And I got nothing. To okay. Yep. okay. Department reports. As far as the uh, 
the activity reports, there's nothing significant or substantial. I think uh, what you're seeing is uh, uh, a reflection on crime and COVID. Uh, our motor vehicle uh, thefts are uh, down extremely. They're down, you know, 80% from last year this time. So that's a <clears throat> that's a good thing. Uh, there's more police activity, uh, more enforcement action, et cetera. As far as the budget goes, uh, we're okay, we're on track, uh, but that can change in uh, the change of the wind. Uh, basically, we're gonna be losing at least two or three officers um, this fiscal year, which means that every replacement of theirs uh, will come at time and a half. So this uh, overtime budget can be in up very quickly. If we have to hire running into next fiscal year, if we have to uh, hire off the uh, new recruit list and we don't get lateral transfers, remember from, from concept to implementation, boots on ground, sometimes that's up to 18 months. Uh, we don't even know if we can get an academy seat anywhere in the state this calendar year. Um, so that's where we set, I wanna say Milford had 30-ish, and don't quote me on the numbers, 30-ish type seats, and they had like 90 plus applicants for those seats for their academy. So um, when I tell you times are dire, I'm, you know, we're not desperate, but they're, they're not, the prognosis and the outlook is not good. Um, if we don't backfill eight positions and we have to start spending overtime, uh, we're going to burn out the department and, uh, or we don't, you know, expect a half million dollar overtime budget next fiscal year. Um, so that's kind of where we sit. We're doing our due diligence, but we're, we're hoping uh, that we're going to get ahead of this. The, the problem is timing is everything. If we offer uh, people a job too early and we don't have an opening, we'll lose them to another agency after we've done all the, uh, the screening and preventative work. So um, we're trying to time everything out, but that's, that's kind of where we sit. And getting back to my point, overtime uh, can change very quickly this year, and it can go sideways next year very quickly if we don't backfill. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Chief. Um, any other report, anything other reports? I see the Warsnees are climbing, um, which goes with the times, I believe. Uh, communications. So you have one, one email uh, in your packet. Um, <clears throat> it is communication requesting a workers' comp uh, leave extension for a patrolman Tartaglione. Um, I'm going to recommend that the, uh, the commission, while being on notice of this, uh, table this item, uh, as this is a personnel matter currently and a subject of discipline. So uh, without going into any further detail, um, I would recommend that you take no action on this because the, the basis of the leave is the point in question. I believe we need a motion for that to table. Could I ask for a motion from commissioners? Sure, I'll make that motion. Okay, Rich, motion to table. I'll uh, second, second that motion. Commissioner Glode, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so that communication has been tabled for now. All right, I'm sure you'll keep us up to date with that, Chief. You'll be uh, beginning a, a slew of correspondence shortly. <laughs> I, I sort of felt that was going to be the case. Okay, uh, moving along to traffic authority. Um, I saw Sergeant Bolton's report on the two uh, fire department boot drives, East, uh, East End and Storm Engine. Um, he recommends that we approve both of those. Um, one to take place May 22nd uh, at uh, by the Storm Engine Company, and the second one Saturday, April 22nd and 3rd um, from East End. Uh, so I look for a motion to accept both of those uh, recommendations from Scott. Yeah, it's, it's April 23rd. Oh, okay. Okay, and then if it rains, it's the next day. Oh, it's the rain date, okay. And then there's a Saturday, um, September 17th with the rain date of the Sunday the 18th. So I'll make a motion. We approve it as he submitted it. Okay. I'll second that motion. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Opposed? All those approved. Motion carries. 
Okay, um, one other item, traffic calming devices. Um, we have been talking, I've been talking with the mayor's office about this. Uh, we have uh, Kevin White on the meeting, at the meeting tonight. Um, he has drawn up a proposal and I'd ask him to kind of take us through it. Kevin, the floor is yours. Yeah, yeah, I'm you. Kevin, can you? Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, you're unmuted now. No, nope. not anymore. Huh? I can you hear now. There we go. Good. Oh, not again. Nope. Try again. You're still on you're, mute. You're back to mute again, Kev. There you go. There you go. Right, don't touch anything. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> These technological things. So my name is Kevin White. I've been uh, turn that down a little bit, Joe. With the city for <clears throat> many years. Yeah, do you have your um, phone? Yep, we got it. Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good. Uh, that's the mayor. Deep. He's going to, uh, you want to start, mayor? No, you're doing good, right. sir. Go for it. All right. Um, a couple of months ago, we were at a meeting and the issue of trying to slow some traffic down in different parts of town came up. And um, since then, we've been looking at couple of spots. One is over on Sodom Lane. The other is on Hawkins Street. Um, we all understand that uh, today's day and age, the cars are built faster than the, than the roads are intended to, to hold. And so something of this nature is um, been used in other communities as this is a pilot program for the city of Derby and would be the first couple areas that we would try it. Um, we've proposed that uh, a couple of speed tables, which are basically four inches uh, in height off of the main surface of the road, uh, the width of the road minus the two feet on both sides for the curbs. And um, in a couple of locations that would hopefully reduce the speed and um, you know, helping the uh, in that area. Now we also understand that there's also some concerns um, from various departments, the police department, the ambulance department, the fire department. I mean, they also then have to go slower on these areas, and and we we understand that too. We're we're researching everything that we can. Um, we're trying to make sure that everything that we do is. Uh, in the best interest of the citizens. And, and as like I said, this pilot program would go in these two areas and uh, we'd see how we, we would get from there to, uh, to either more locations in town or not. Um, we've sent the maps over to you. I'm not sure if you've seen them. Um, we've done some estimates on the costs of these particular um, bumps. Uh, they are approximately fourteen hundred dollars each, with the uh, with the use of the town forces for both the painting and also for the asphalt. There's a lot of signage that goes in there to tell people that these things are there. Um, we've adhered to all of the national standards for that, and um, and and that's what we're proposing tonight. We're interested if there's any questions or concerns or you know like I said we're open for comments um we're just hoping that we can move forward with this uh, Mr. Chairman uh, can I step in absolutely Mayor. Mayor. um the, the reason to, to, just to let the board know the reason this came up last uh, in the last couple of years campaigning walking the streets of Derby and talking to the residents um Hawkins Street I mean just standing there and you know, the kids are out there playing and 
you know, the, the families and the parents were looking like, look at this car go by, look at this car by. And we all see it. We all, and like Kevin said, cars are faster now. People are more distracted. Um, Saddam Lane with the Hops Company there, traffic is, 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 you know, tenfold, I think, over there. So, and even trying to walk there, knocking on doors and just walking your dog. And I, I go walking over to the big Y. I'm not even afraid to walk there. And I've been a cop for 30 something years now, traffic. Uh, trained and all. Um, I've seen them in other towns. I've seen them in Hamden. I've seen them in, in Woodbridge. Uh, Kevin White and myself drove over there, checked these tables out. Um, I believe it'll be a good start to really start slowing things down. Uh, we've been getting a lot of calls from the residents. I've been talking to a lot of them. They were very happy that we're researching this and looking into this. Um, funds will be supplied to uh, the loss of program that we have for local roads. Um, so I, I think it's a, a great first start. First start. It's a, um, uh, like I said, a pilot to see how these things work. I know you probably get inundated once they happen because they're going to do a great job to really keep things safer. And just because the fact that there isn't a lot of accidents or pedestrian strikes and stuff like that doesn't mean that they can't happen. All right. We, I think we've been very lucky with the speed on these vehicles and distractions that are out there. And I think this is going to be another tool in our tool belt to really keep our citizens safe. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to speak. Okay. Um, some questions I have uh, for Kevin. Uh, how do we measure success or failure in this? Certainly, I think that by the installation of uh, these speed humps in the next coming months, um, just by visual, physical, uh, visual observations, you will see that the traffics on both of these roads are, are have A, slow down, and B, the distractions that they potentially hold either are true or not true. Um, if we're getting complaints, you know, that are numbering in the uh, 20s and 30s and 40s, on a monthly basis, then obviously there's something that has to be looked at. If we're getting one or two a month and the traffic that uh, was once probably averaging 40 to 45 or even more miles per hour, uh, you know, before these installations are now down to 20 to 25, which they are intended, then we're having a success. Okay. Um, okay, so we're talking 1400 per set per, is that what we're talking bump. per yeah per, per bump. table so we're talking, bump, whatever the we're the talking. old terminology is the speed bump this is a table because it's a little bit wider and uh just the terminology is a, a speed table okay um how many of them are you looking at four two on sodom two on hawkins uh the ones on sodom Yeah, the, the one on the coming from the orange Derby town line is just before you get to Krakow Street. That's the first one. And then the second one is up by the uh, Hops Company. And the ones on Hawkins are just after 11th. And the second one would be just before 10th coming from Seymour Avenue. And then so two on each road. Okay. And I know that we we put the speed sign out on the road that, that reads how fast cars are going by. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that Chief Todd keeps track of that. We can see what the speeds are. Are these just places you pick because people have called or have we done the study and seen that people are actually going faster than what's supposed to? Because people speed on every road. I just want to see how you pick these two. Because um, like even we had problems uh, on Academy Hill but we can't pull people over there. So it, it's tough and you can't put a speed hump on a hill because people are gonna get airborne. Um, and if there's two, if the curves are there, I don't know how much room you have before there's a curve, there needs to be a certain amount of uh, straight road when you do the speed hump because people will get airborne on those things. So- Mr. Chairman, can I, can yes. I respond to that please? Yeah. So Rich, like I said before, um, you know, walking, you know, that naturally Sodom Lane is in the area where I live and I'm, I'm on there a lot and just seeing <laughs> the traffic coming by and granted, we don't probably have the enforcement and policing has changed 
within the last couple of years. And walking there, walking on Hawkins Street, I was just amazed, like I said, about, you know, if you're standing there, you know, like done road jobs and everything, and the chief and deputy chief can say that. When you got a car going by you at 30, 35 miles an hour, you know, people say, oh my God, it's like 50. <laughs> but it's, it's just like, the, you know, these people need to pay more attention with the signage there, with these humps there. I, I, I firmly believe that, you know, it's going to, it's going to make them pay more attention. Um, why we picked those two streets? I wanted to do one on the west side and one on the east side. I mean, we got heavy traffic on Sodom Lane and Hawkins Street. I was just amazed talking to the people there and seeing the traffic coming up Sherman or not Sherman, um, Seymour, and coming up through there and making the lefts and rights in that neighborhood. Um, I mean, there was other uh, streets in that neighborhood. And like you said, it, it's all over. It's, 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 but like I said, we got to start some. It's a pilot program. Um, it's, it's, it's not as expensive as I was initially thought it was going to be. Uh, we have the money from the state for our uh, opposite money. And, and they're looking to, you know, s slow speed down to help the pedestrians out in, in the bicycle. So those are the, that's the main reason that we picked those two streets. I wanted to get one on the west and one on the east side so we can at least see how this is working. And then maybe we can get more. And I'm just really hoping that, you know, it's, it's, and the residents were asking for it too. So to answer your other part of that question, sir. Thank you. Okay. And the other thing oh. they, I know that I've never done the studies, but I know I've, I listened to Scott talks, um, the speed bumps slow people down as they approach, but they go faster between the two humps then because they're pissed. They had to slow down for the first one. That's, uh, so I don't know if it will help or, Hurt. And are these permanent? So when the plows come by, they got to lift every time? Yes, they are permanent. Okay. Okay. So what I'm what I'm kind of proposing, and, and this is with the commission and with the uh, with the mayor's office, is uh, that we move forward with the pilot portion of this, um, with the caveat that. Uh, we revisit, we send this to the Board of Aldermen. Um, Mayor, which, what committee from Board of Aldermen would this go to? It would most, uh, it would go to the old light committee because they handle all the roads, public works and everything. So I think it would probably be that would be more uh, appropriate. And one of the things I'd hope to accomplish here is to get public input with that meeting. Um, so that we can hear from folks who are going to live in these areas, um, fearing complaints about noise, cars going over them. Um, so I would like to see it go to the Board of Aldermen. At the same time, um, I would like to see if the LTA can sit down with the mayor's office to begin to design a criteria if this moves forward any further. Um, because I know what's my biggest fear is going to be everyone on every street is going to say cars go fast here why can't i have one here and when does it end uh exactly that's that's what i i i think we we as the lta should do is one monitor this program uh, make sure the public is aware that we're beginning this program going through the boa and then bring out bring up you know measurable results and, and uh, i agree criteria for installing these things um, i think that's, that's what about, tommy i think maybe we could even recommend that at you know some point in the mid fall late fall you know after these things have been installed we can give you some measurable you know answers as to what we proposed and what really the realities are okay um chief I, I believe I, we've spoken about this a few times. I know you're neither for nor against. Um, and I just, you know, would, would like your input. Well, I, I haven't seen anything on this, um, but uh, I'm, I'm neither supporting or opposing it. Uh, I mean, it's your roads, you're the LTA. I can just give you my expertise in this. Uh, I'm not an engineer, but uh, everything that we do is measurable results. So uh, just a few questions and I'm, I'm not even asking for an answer is, uh, is there a problem? Do you have uh, any traffic studies that say that the 80th percentile is blank blank, which is recommended uh, 
to install these? Uh, have we looked at other measures? Because I've been a big proponent of uh, a road diet and uh, looking at things like narrowing the fog lines uh, to give the perception of a narrowed roadway. Uh, that's a huge one that I wanted to try on uh, Marshall Lane. The other thing is, have we looked at um, uh, divided um, speed tables, which allow uh, traffic to straddle and go between the lanes in emergency situations like police cars and fire trucks. Um, and then again, as uh, Commissioner mentioned, uh, are we going to be looking at this for a measurable result? And if there's none, it's detrimental effect. What's the remedy to remove these at a certain point in time? And just lastly, uh, how many how many of these are installed in the valley? I've never seen one. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I just have some open ended questions, but uh, we can install all these that we want. I mean, you know, like I said, I don't have I don't have anything except uh, asking those questions to put it on the record. But outside of that, I'm not opposed to these either. Uh, but what I found is at one point in time, we were the stop sign capital of Connecticut. And oh, what we did is we increased speed because they were used to control speeding and a problem didn't exist in the first place. So I just wanna make sure that we are, we're sure of that. And if somebody could forward that to the department so we could at least take a look at what you're proposing it would be great. Thank you. Uh, we'll get that to you, Chief, as soon as we can. Um, I, I understand I have spoken to two other communities outside of the Valley that have used these. Uh, New Haven is one, East Haven is one. Um, both have indicated some, some really good success um, with these. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's going to work here. That doesn't mean it's not going to work here. But um, it's it's worth a try, I think, uh, just to see what results we get. Uh, and as the mayor alluded to earlier, we've all been on road jobs and seen people go by and thought to ourselves, wow, how, how fast can people go on this road? Uh, it's, it's a 24-7 type of thing, so we don't have to tie up the limited manpower that we have uh, when it comes to enforcing speed on local roads. Uh, so I, I think it's worth a shot, but I wanna make sure it's the public's aware that we're doing this and that we're making the right steps and we have measurable results. Uh, so we can either say, yes, let's move forward and expand or let's remove and start over and take a better look. Uh, and with that, I'd ask for a motion. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Ahead, Mr. Mark. Chair, may I speak? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mark Garfalo, Town Clerk. One of the best ways to let people know what it is or what, what is going on before you make a recommendation to the Board of Aldermen is to make a clearer indication on the agenda because n nobody would guess that traffic calming devices would be <clears throat> a, a specific recommendation to the Board of Aldermen uh, tonight with specific streets that it, how would anybody know? There's no, I, I, I've been listening to these meetings for a long time. Nobody from Sodom Lane or Hawkins Street has come to a meeting to talk about speeding issues. They, but there were, there were incidents on, on Elizabeth Street and the people on Academy Hill have, have talked about it. And Academy Hill is not just a hill. There's, there's, there's a flat straightaway there. So uh, I, I would ur urge you to get the input and have a rationale because you're going to have a, 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 a run on people trying to, because there, these problems exist uh, all over town. And if you're going to vote on something that nobody, nobody had any, no, there's no way that anybody could have, could have uh, understood that this was what this agenda item meant on the agenda tonight. Well, and if it comes to the board with a recommendation, then it's <laughs> that 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 kind of lacks the the clarity of what the agenda item is all about. That's just well, my observation. So my feeling is that I wanted to bring this to the uh, to a committee of the board of aldermen to vet this, um, as I am aware that nobody, very few people come on these meetings, uh, very few people speak at these meetings. Um, my plan is to send it to a committee of the board of aldermen where it can be publicly noted uh, and both the alderman and the local traffic authority can listen to the input that's coming from the residents. Um, and that's well, wouldn't, what I'm wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be the, wouldn't it be the place to put it here first though, to vet no, it here? 
It, it, well, the place to vet it would be with the alderman um, as a joint venture rather than making the LTA say, yes, let's do this, and then hand it to the alderman and say, okay, we did this, so you've got to do something now. My feeling is we do it jointly so that everyone's aware of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and where it's going to go. Um, and the first step is to take the LTA and have it send it off to a committee of the Board of Aldermen. And also, Mr. Chairman, Sorry, if I could, uh, well, Mark, there's certain criteria for, like you just mentioned, uh, Academy Hill coming down, curves. Uh, there's there's certain requirements that need to take place. You can't put it on a hill. You can't put it on a curb. So, I mean, there's certain things that we had to look at. And that's why the engineer was looking into this and um, trying to do what we can. And it's like I said, once again, we said it, it is a pilot program. We have to start somewhere. Uh, Hops company is very busy. Uh, the major cut through there in, in Hawkins Street. I saw down there that a lot of traffic coming through there. A lot of kids in that neighborhood too. Not saying that the other neighborhoods in town aren't as special as these, but we need to start somewhere. So and that's what we want with that. All right. The Thank other you. thing, Tommy said we need something measurable. Do we have the number of cars that come through there? The average speed of the cars that come through there now? Uh, the well, time of day when it's heavy? Do we have that? I, so I, we, I, need, I need something to compare it to. So we have a baseline. So, Tom, if I could just chime in real quick here. Yes, um, there's, there's one major link that seems to be missing here. When we have discussed this over the years, we have consistently said that through our training, anything that's, that's taken under this major of, of, of a change has to be backed by an engineering study. We at the police department have seen nothing. Um, we have numbers for Sodom Lane, but we've never conducted anything on Hawkins Street. So how can you measure any success of a program or failure of a program if you don't have a baseline? So if a baseline was conducted on Hawkins Street, I, I'd love to see it because we don't have it. I'll defer to Kevin for that. We don't, we do not have the physical data for Hawkins Street. <clears throat> That's all I was asking. So we, so we can tell if it's a success or a failure or if there's no change, we need to know what our baseline is. And I have, personally have no idea. Well, and that's something I think we, we have to get. Uh, I agree. That's why I was saying I, I would like to see some measurable results yeah. um, or, or at least statistics. Um, even if we move forward on Sodom um, until we can get the numbers on Hawkins. Um, I, I think it's worthwhile trying. Let's put it that way. Um, and again, I want to vet this through the Board of Aldermen, uh, through the, the committees, which I think can give us some time to gather the, the data that we're going to need. So that's where we so are. You're not, you're, so you're not, so, you, so the idea is you're not making a recommendation. You're just forwarding it to the board? We're going to recommend to the board to listen to the issue. We're not making a recommendation to approve or deny it. I want the Board of Aldermen's input on this. Okay, understood. Thank you. And then uh, maybe in the meantime, we I don't know when our last study was on Sodom Lane for the speed, but if it looks like it's something we're going to be moving forward with at some point in the future, we may want, want one that's more recent. I don't know if it was pre-pandemic, during the pandemic, just recently, things like that. So just so we have the data, just so we have something. I don't have any. Understood. Um, and again, it's a starting point. That's that's all I want. I'm looking yeah. for here. That's I think what everybody's looking for here is a starting point. And with that, I think the recommendation from the LTA should be to go to the Board of Aldermen subcommittee uh, with the plan that we have now and the onus coming on the planners uh, to gather the data so that we can we can do that. That would be uh, Kevin and Deputy Chief Todd getting together with numbers and data that you have and find the gaps and fill them so we can move this forward. That's fine. So I will need a motion to send this to a Board of Aldermen subcommittee. I'll make that motion for the Board of Aldermen subcommittee. Okay. Second. Yep, I'll second. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so moved. We're going to move it to the subcommittee. Um, Kevin, we will, uh, I will arrange a meeting with the commissioners, Deputy Chief Todd, and with you so that we can figure out what data we start gathering uh, and we can come to the Board of Alderman subcommittee with all, all the ducks that we can get in a row. I thank you so much. I think we made some progress tonight. I think we're all <laughs> trying to understand where we are and where we're going. We scratch the surface. Uh, Mark, I, I hear what you're saying. I understand where you're coming from. Um, that problem has not gone away. Speed bumps aren't going to clear that problem at High Street, Sentinel Hill, and all of that. Um, last I knew, our recommendation was for the Board of Aldermen to start looking at uh, potentially re-engineering that curve. Um, that's the only solution that we're going to come up with that's going to be permanent and really um, solve some of the problems there. So it's 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 there, it exists, and it's something that you know it's going to take some money to do. Um, I don't think our six hundred dollar line item for the police commission is going to pretty much do that. So that's where we are. Um, anything else under LTA? Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time for this. I appreciate it, and I look forward to this. Thank forward. you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank Good you, Kevin. Good night. Good night. Okay, uh, I'll now look for a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Okay, Rich. I'll, I'll second, second that motion. Mike. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Meeting is adjourned at 6.43 p.m. See you later. Good, one. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night.